here's something I, I decided this last week. And I don't care what part of the body it's regarding. I don't care male or female. I think it's fair to say shaving is bullshit. Okay. Just because I went, I had to go get new new razor blades for my razor. Mm-hmm. Four, four blades. Twenty dollars. So you're going for the ZZ Top look then? Well, no, it's just it's bullshit. And it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be quite the same thing, you know, if you got like uh, uh, the electric razor, except the electric fucking razor don't fucking work. Electric razors are a lie. I know people that use electric razors. They're quite fond of them. Well, they never work for me. I still get the. It's bullshit. Maybe you're hairier than other people. Well, yes. You've seen me. Are you Bigfoot? No, I'm part Wookiee, though. I'm pretty sure. Uh, my nephew watches this show about finding Bigfoot. It's a reality show <laughs> of these three dudes that hunt Bigfoot. And every time we watch it, he explains to me. They're never going to find him in Terra. Bigfoot's not real. Wonder he doesn't really exist. If they're like going to get start getting desperate, start looking in the closet and under the bed. Nope. And I'm like, okay, Pat, thanks. Good to know. I appreciate it. Kids are helpful like that. Yeah, he's a good kid. <sighs> so we got to start this week with uh, a follow-up to... Remember last week we had... You should probably start this week with the title sequence. Yes. Yes. That. Shut up. <laughs> That's the sidekicks of four. Yes, yes. That and makeup right. tips. Uh, so... Let's see. Where are you? Here it is. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide inter- Catherine, for the of their audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, fight all sorts of horrible shit. Bring it back here. We'll send it. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You. And at the beginning of last crazy. week, I talked about a story that everybody said. I'm crazy for and I think they were all kind of desperately hoping so it was true. It was three boob Monty. Three boob Monty, yes. Follow the boob, follow the boob. Oops, it fell out in the airport. Or as as the Huffington Post put it, a tale of three titties. Because they're so <laughs> they're so classy at the Huffington Post. Oh, that's a pun I wish I thought of. <laughs> Salutes to you, Huffington Post. Good job. And every if you're just now following, a person a woman claiming her name as Jasmine Tridevil. Allegedly had plastic surgery. It's a bit on the nose. To add a third boob. A little total recall there. And people sent me this story like, have you seen this shit? And I think deep down they really wanted this to be true on some visceral level. I mean, who doesn't? Some guys just want a woman that's just made of boobs. There's at least one dude on the internet that would just love somebody who's nothing but boobs. Like a sex doll that's just boobs with one little vagina in the middle. There's somebody who wants that. And they're probably watching. Well, I'm going to, to, to break that guy's heart a little bit. Because my instincts serve me well on this one. Snopes said no. Ah, oh, good old Snopes. Yeah. <coughs> and I wouldn't <coughs> just be covering it because of the Snopes angle. No, no. Because the shit gets weirder. All right, here's how you know that's a Photoshop. Huh. Her leftmost boob and middle boob, there's no seam in between There, there doesn't really seems to be one, no. The Photoshopper forgot that part. So allegedly she had spent $20,000 on this. However... The internet is forever, and it does not forget shit. And they found, amazingly, a woman by the name of uh, Alicia Hessler had a modeling page that looked suspiciously like Jasmine Tridevil. Oh. Further, a little bit of, you know, looking back, um, Hessler was taken uh, into, let's see, 
Um, she reported earlier in the month she'd file a stolen baggage complaint at Tampa International Airport that listed, quote, three breast prosthesis among the items lost. That's a little definitive, but apparently she's had other issues. She In December of 2013, she had headlines in an incident she claimed she was beaten on the way home from a club, then offered her attacker a choice of standing on a street corner wearing a dunce cap and holding a sign that read, quote, I beat women, rather than being reported police charged with a crime. Hessler said she also, quote, wanted to ha have the man who beat her sign a waiver allowing her to beat him for 10 minutes. According to local police... Hessler, Hessler withdrew her complaint and stopped returning their calls after she was prejudiced for details of the alleged attack. Apparently, she's desperate to get on reality TV in some way, shape, or form. Can we also talk about something further down in the Snopes article? Where's that? <coughs> that apparently she wanted... I'm sorry for the coughing. I have a cold. Oh, you can okay. probably hear it in my voice. It's okay. um, it say, there's a quote about why she wanted the third boob. Yeah. I got it because I wanted to make myself unattractive to men because I don't want to date anymore. Most guys would think the extra breast is weird and gross. Couple things. <laughs> Couple things. One, if you don't want to date anymore, don't. Just yeah. don't. Yeah. Just be like, no, motherfucker. We're closed for business. That's, that's all you gotta do. That's all you have to do to not date anymore. You don't have to jump into a vat of acid. You don't have to give yourself a third boob. You don't have to be unattractive to men. You can just not. You can just be like, nah, I'm good. Thanks. Some of those things you described are things you need to do to become a supervillain. Yeah, but, but not, if you don't want to yeah. date anymore, you can just, you know, not. That's an option. So, second thing. Yes. More boobs is never going to be unattractive no. to men. And weird and gross, if it involves boobs, kind of going to do it for a lot of guys. I remember there was a... Uh, there was a there were chicks that were into those blue Navi aliens, man. Th there was they a, were like, hair sex? Let's have some hair sex. There was it's a weird. old, old episode of Married with Children where Al Bundy said he wanted a woman with three breasts, two in the front and one in the back, or dancing. Why wouldn't you want two in the back? Symmetry. I don't know. It was a really stupid show. But All I'm it, saying is, if you want to be unattractive to men, adding boobs, not the way to go. Take boobs away. I, I would like to point out a couple things. Number one, we checked this story <laughs> before we uh, we did or did not use it. Because we are motherfucking goddamn journalists. We are more journalists than most of the news stories that ran with this as though it were gospel and did not guys, check this shit. I don't have my AP style book in my desk. I do have it on the bookshelf in my closet. I keep an AP style book with me at all times just because, you know, in case it ever comes up. I do, however, have my trusty pocket dictionary. Hmm. Just in case I never need to look up a word in my pocket. But there's a fucking AP style book in my closet and I'm not afraid to use it. So, uh, if when you send me these stories, guys, very simple way to determine whether it is, in fact, a real thing that happened. The first Snopes. thing... Snopes! Snopes helps. Yes, yeah, Snopes is one. Another thing you can do is check to see if it's being reported anywhere else. A way to help do that is find a name, a proper name somewhere in the story, highlight it, and Google that name. If it Who comes up, Google. Yes, Google. If it comes up in another story, check it. Also, check the reputation of the place you're getting it from. Some sites less reputable than others. And finally, make sure none of them are the Onion. <coughs> that's the other thing. Check the about page of whatever news site you're using. If something it's, sounds too good to be true, satire is a thing. Yeah, you check the about page, and there's satire because there was a story everyone sent me today about a guy who apparently d dug a tunnel from his house to the pub and it collapsed because he was trying to avoid his wife, so he dug it under the house. And it was total bullshit because it was written on a satire site. But real news sites ran with the motherfucker. Why? Because... Why did this happen to journalism? <laughs> a 
because I was a journalism minor, as I've mentioned before. And one of the biggest things we were taught was verify. Yeah, source your shit. Always source your shit. Always cite a source. Like, what happened? The internet. Which, converse, while make it much easier to verify information, conversely, it <coughs> has to be put out much, much faster. So, all right. Well, we have some actual shit that happened this week. Snopes is where the Mudstrom story came from. Do you remember the Mudstrom story? You told me the Mudstrom. Oh, God, don't. It's on Snopes. Uh... Guys, on Snopes, search for Mudstrim. Don't! If you have not heard the story. You'll you be don't, glad that you no, did. You'll thank no. me later. No, you won't. You won't thank her. You'll you'll struggle to sleep at night. Ugh. So yeah, um, have I know you live near New York City? Have you seen in public people who walk around with their eye device, their be it their phone or their tablet, walking down the street, completely focused on it? And nothing else. You don't have to be in New York City to see that. Well, I, I know, would like but... to point out a common misconception. All of New York is not New York City. I've had a lot of people. I live in Westchester. I'm here at Xavier School for the Gifted. It's been an hour from New York City by train. But you, you Southern Hicks think that the whole state is one big city. How often do you actually go into the boroughs? Well, I work now in the Bronx and one day a week in Queens. So three days a week at least. Okay, so you're there. <coughs> I'm not wrong. Lay off the caffeine, honey. You're really hyper tonight. Why are you reading the chat? Nothing good comes to that. Anyway, my point is, you've seen this. These people who just completely focus on their, or their the little screen of... Well, if in addition to having to potentially getting hit by cars or other pedestrians, it has another thing it could get you in trouble with, and that is arrested. Man breaches security oh, no. at Sydney Airport. Security breach at Sydney Airport that led to terminal evacuation was sparked by a passenger concentrating on his iPad and not where he was going. Passengers were evacuated at Sydney Airport on Saturday morning after the man walked into Terminal 3, used for domestic flights, without passing through security screening. Quite a spokesman said the man bypassed security screening by using an exit passage. The man disembarked a flight and left. Apparently, he wasn't paying attention, was looking at his ass, iPad, forgot something, and walked back past the security area. You can't just wander anywhere you fucking want in an airport. As a result, they had to evacuate. They thought it was a fucking security threat. They evacuated the whole airport. You can't just, you can't just do that. All because one goober just had to know what the fuck was coming, was happening on Twitter. Twitter will still be there. No, I, I like reading. You know, uh, I like reading certain people on Twitter quite a bit. You know, but Will Wheaton's going to be there later. You can go Will back Wheaton's and check. Will Wheaton is always going to be there. Yeah. Pictures of Bridget <laughs> are always going to be there. Is she doing the whole head up? She is. Yeah. She's all like. <laughs> so, yeah, just <laughs> also how security just let this happen is a little unsettling. Yeah, nobody like tackled this guy. Yeah, nobody stopped him. It's just, you know, he's. I guess if you look like you know what you're doing, other people will believe it, too. And Australia is under alert, too, aren't they? I don't know. Are Didn't they? ISIS say they're going to hit Australia? Oh, if, if they... Well, ISIS is... ISIS wants to hit everybody. Yeah. But... <coughs> just, but you don't just wander around the airport. You got to pay attention. This is an etiquette thing that Emily Post didn't get to cover because cell phones and smartphones didn't exist in yeah. her day. You gotta pay the fuck attention to your surroundings. And it's not just phones, it's in general. Like, I've worked a lot of years in retail and I've had people shove their credit card in my face when there's a hit pad right in front of them to swipe their card. I do that. You gotta pay the fuck attention to your surroundings. Well, that's because I'm old. People complain, 
complain about how long the line is, but then when they get up to their spot in line, yeah. And do they know what they want when they get up to the counter? No, they don't. Do they have their money ready? No, they don't. Like, you got to pay the fuck attention to your surroundings. You have to participate in your environment. You have to be a human. Like, like the world does not expect you to sport. You got to participate. We have that. Today. We have that taken to a further extreme of being a little too self-involved. Again, with the airports, this one a bit ups the ante a bit. Um, we have seen planes grounded for many passenger actions. I love that term because it sounds like they sent the plane to timeout because it was bad. <laughs> they grounded the flight. There's like a corner at the airport. There's like they one, can't one go plane. To the prom. <laughs> The plane can't go to the prom. It was bad. Well, in this case, the plane can't go to the prom because it might need to be hosed off. Uh Uh-oh. From Nebraska. Masturbating passenger forces plane to land. Commercial airplane traveling from Boston. Is he single? (laughs) Yeah, it's... (laughs) That sounds like a guy I want to meet. You can bring down a plane with that thing? Damn! Commercial airplane traveling from Boston to Los Angeles is forced to make an unscheduled landing in Nebraska because of an unruly pastor in the Bay Area. FAA said the Virgin America flight... Wow, really? It happened on a Virgin America Because flight. of course it did. <laughs> Made the unscheduled landing Monday morning following a medical emergency aboard. Police officer's report paints a slightly different picture. 26-year-old Doug Adams of Woodside was, quote, masturbating in flight and later tried to open an exit door. Uh, I mean, if that's what gets you off, then cool, but maybe just pay for that. Is that a service you can pay for? No. Can you get Hawker to throw you out of an airplane? (laughs) That's a really specific fetish. Somebody find that out for me. I need to know. That is a hilariously specific fetish. Yeah. I I love how th- th- just who does that on a plane? I think more people than you would imagine, probably. Yeah, but not while you're in sitting in like among people. I could okay. Go to I the back. think more people than you would oh. imagine, probably. Those tray tables cover a lot. Especially if you're in coach and there's no room, like that tray table pretty much covers everything you want to cover. I really haven't put as much thought into this as it sounds like. <laughs> <coughs> I'm terrified of flying. This would never occur to me. I'm usually just trying not to have a panic attack. But I'm saying, you you could double click your mouse pretty easily under that tray table. One-eyed snake on a plane. Really? Really? Shademi, Really? Oh. <laughs> but why open the door? Yeah, I know. Apparently after, uh, let's see. Um, man returned from the bathroom. He had argued with a woman sitting next to him and tried to tell an attendant he wanted her to move. And at that point was fidgeting and began to remove the plastic covering for the emergency door and tried to pull open the door. Maybe he just got really worked up and needed some fresh air. happens this i i this guy i'm amazed his ass was not kicked seven ways to sunday with all the bullshit of trying to get from point a to point b this son of a bitch makes you land in nebraska of all fucking places i know because he's frankly i didn't know nebraska had an airport (laughs) i await your angry letters because he was just jerking added off. to the list of places I've pissed off. Because he was jerking off. Of all the just. That is the least. I don't even understand the Mile High Club thing. That is the least sexy environment when you're compressed with all these fucking strangers. And annoying it's not the strangers. Environment. That. It's not the environment. It's the excitement. It's the forbiddenness. It's the. You know. Committing a federal crime and maybe getting caught. Well, yeah, but then you have an entire plane load of people who want to kick your ass. 
and not in the fun way. Which is part of the thrill, apparently. <sighs> well, we've got another one of... Oh, God, we have another one. It's been a while since we've had one of these. <laughs> well, nothing kills a boner like Nebraska. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe it was a guy's masturbating and he won't stop. I'll solve this. That was M. Cypher. I didn't say that for the record. Still, I'll solve this. I know what I know what will cure this problem. Call for a landing. Uh so we've is had there a shot in the drinking game for a terror pisses off a geographic area? I don't know what there is yet. <laughs> Should be. So the we haven't had one of these stories for a while, but god damn it, they keep happening. Canadian man found with 51 live turtles. <laughs> I saw this. Stuffed in his pants. <laughs> a Detroit man has been charged with, with federal smuggling crimes after he allegedly was found trying to cross from Detroit into Canada with 51 live turtles in his pants. Criminal complaint How is that even possible? I don't know. Said uh, Kai Zhu, a Canadian citizen, was trying to return to Windsor with the live reptiles tucked in baggies around his legs. Um, Poor turtles. He... I, I, a federal agent said Zoo took the box with the turtles and other material to an area between two UPS semi-trailers, then walked out later with bulges on his legs beneath his pants. <laughs> because that's not suspicious. That's really subtle. No, no, I'm fine. I'm not smuggling something. I just spontaneously got cancer. No, it's okay, guys. I'm just Deadpool. This, you know, bulges in your legs don't just happen. Mm. That's... And nobody is that happy to see anybody. <laughs> 51. Wouldn't it be funny if this was the same guy as the last story? <laughs> <laughs> we could just retire. <laughs> we could be like, good night, internet. It's been fun. This, this was, these were the most unhappy turtles. I know, those poor turtles. Like, first of all, they're in plastic bags. Hopefully yeah. he thought to pull coals in them. Uh. <coughs> but that's not a place they really... He really bagged himself the, the opportunity to really come out of... He certainly bagged himself the opportunity to really come out of his shell. Really? Really? That was bad. That was awful. He traveled a long way for that one. That was awful. That what was he going to... Do with 51 turtles, does it say? Let's see here. Um, There's a lot of both illegal and unregulated turtle consumption. Oh. He was going to eat the turtles. Or give them to people to eat. Which, that's even worse, because you're giving people not only illegal turtles, illegal turtles that have been in your pants. You're giving them pants turtles. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not exactly appetizing right there. <laughs> Oh, they're tenderized. 51 turtles. That's a lot of turtles. That's enough turtles in percentages to win an election. Like the guy with 49 turtles, he loses. Oh. Uh, that's, that's poor things. I just, I can't... You know, I don't care what kind of creature you are. You don't deserve to be shoved in some guy's pants. You just don't. I don't care if you're... Unless, unless you're willing and being well compensated. I don't care if you're a scorpion. You don't deserve to just be uh, unceremoniously shoved in some guy's pants. What do you have against scorpions? They're terrifying. Okay. <laughs> doesn't mean they don't have feelings. No, I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> Maybe they do. Uh. Oh, God. Okay, well, now it's time back to some regular good old-fashioned inexplicable crazy. This one comes to us from New Hampshire. You know what it is? It's not my bandwidth. It's the fancy webcam keeps turning on and off. 
weird. Like I see the blue light go on and then it goes off and then it goes on and then it goes off. We'll have to do something about that. Anyway. So from the department of I dare you to make less sense. Chainsaw wielding man accused of setting fire to picnic table. Oh. An Epping man was arrested in Chester on Wednesday after he set a picnic table on fire and threatened a homeowner with a chainsaw. Police said they were called home uh, on the report of an intoxicated man. Police said the man was running, accused of going after a homeowner with a running chainsaw. He had lit a picnic table on fire prior to getting there. The officer was also advised the subject had started a chainsaw and was chasing the resident homeowner around the yard with a chainsaw. Works said the homeowner was trying to defend himself with pepper spray. He said the man, <laughs> identified as Kyle Capotis, uh, knew people at the house. Okay. If you have problems with your neighbors, I know that can be an issue at times. However, there are many ways to resolve this, none of which involve a chainsaw! Or fire. No, fire! Unless, unless you invite your neighbors to a friendly bonfire to talk about your feelings. Right, right. Other than that, no. A running chainsaw does not make any situation. That almost never diffuses tension. Not yet. It, I've never been in an argument. I'm thinking, wow, you know what we really need is a chainsaw to just settle things down. I have. But <laughs> they don't give me chainsaws. The reasons for which the records are sealed by the court. Uh, when the police arrived, he had fled into the woods. Police chased the man and yelled at him to stop, but he refused. They eventually stopped running and police found him trying to hide under a fallen tree. Was the chainsaw still running? Because if so, that's an even worse disguise than it sounds like. <laughs> Evil Dead is not a, la a LARP. Yes. Yes. That's one of those... You don't ever wake up in the morning and think, you know what? I'm probably going to get chased by a chainsaw today. I've never had that thought. <laughs> ever. That's really... It's not one you're mentally prepared to deal with. I don't think no. anybody is. No, that's a bad day. I have been in the ER next to a guy who was using a chainsaw for yard work and it got away from him. And I needed stitches because I exacted with my finger open, which I did about 16 times over the course of my life. And this poor guy was just like... When the chainsaw got away from him, did other parts get away from him too? Luckily, no. He didn't rob anything off. But uh. he was covered in some nasty, nasty wounds. Like... They rushed him in and they're like, we're going to have to keep you away. I'm like, you know what? It's cool. I think I'm going to, I think you're going to be able to save the finger. It's fine. You know, I, I, I can even imagine you're in Fallujah. You're in the middle of a fucking war zone. And just the idea of, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have to deal with the guy with the chainsaw. That not, didn't even occur to you there. It's just one of those things that, who does this? Crazy people. And why set a table on fire? Yeah, what was the table fire supposed to help with? <laughs> what, what did that table ever do to you? What did that accomplish? But added an arson charge, so yay. Yeah. Okay, okay, oh god. You've heard the old saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. You can't get fooled again. Yeah, can't get fooled again. Well, the kids in here probably are too young to even get that. Drive drunk once, shame on you. Drive drunk four times in the same day. Are the cops asleep? Come on, man. Don't they keep you? John Lorenko, 53, was ar arrested <coughs> once in Providence on Sunday and three times in Cumberland on Monday. 
smashing three of his vehicles in collisions with other cars and a tree. The first the arrest, Lareko was arrest, released with summons to the custody of his parents. He's 53, wow. Until he was finally held for arraignment. At one point, a breathalyzer clocked him at nearly three times the legal limit for alcohol. Cumberland Police Captain Douglas... Uh, oh, God, I can't say that last name. Ciulo. Ciulo, thank you. Said he'd never seen anything... Uh, he'd never seen anything a streak like this before, and hopefully he never saw... It. What? Does that sentence <laughs> make sense? He'd never so seen any... He'd never any seen a streak... Anything a streak like this before, and hope he never saw it again. Wow, Amanda Milkovitz. Amanda Milkovitz. Yeah. Get the editor. Lorenko's travel began mid morning Sunday in Providence when his Dodge pickup crashed into a Pawtucket family's SUV and injured two small children. Ah! Lorenko was treated at a Rhode Island hospital. And that's the point where, you know what, you're in jail. Yeah, how. Generally, everywhere I've ever lived. Where he was put in restraints after... If you get stopped for drunk driving, you don't go home. Yeah, he was put in restraints after threatening an officer and tossing a bottle filled with urine at staff. Then he was released with a summons. He returned home to Cumberland, where police say he began Monday morning with a crash. He was arrested at 7 a.m. after crashing a Chevy sedan to another car. He submitted to a breath louser with found a blood alcohol content at .220. Legal limit is .08. He was charged with drunk driving and released to his parents. He was arrested again at 11 a.m. When an officer saw him driving an old Plymouth Barracuda, he was taken to the landmark hospital, submitted to a blood test, released to the hospital's custody. Lorico left the hospital and started driving his dump truck at 5 p.m he crashed it into a tree then returned to the hospital to another blood test that was held for court isn't throwing your bodily fluids at people a crime yes was this you ever heard the old for old saying i can't even get arrested in this town <laughs> who does this guy have pictures of Driving a dump... I got to the point where he ran out of vehicles to the point he had to resort to a dump truck. You know what's exciting? He's used up his three strikes and then some. In a day! Why did they keep letting him go? <coughs> After the first time. I mean, presumably... Presumably, he has money because he has over three cars. Yeah. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy. But he is a dump trunk. He has a dump, dump truck in Providence. Uh, uh, I'm wait, not saying. I'm sorry. I'm no, just saying. After garbage disposal in a mafia town. Woke up this morning. <laughs> got yourself. A yeah. Gun. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not saying. I'm just. I'm just saying. Just, you know, after he injured, they did release the kids from the hospital, so they're probably minor injuries. But, you know, even the first time, after you've got to four, put a four year old, a six year old in the hospital, you're not going Jesus home. <coughs> but then to, to two, three more times. What the fuck? Did, this cops. This is when cops need to be fired for this shit. You wouldn't even get away with that in Grand Theft Auto. No. <laughs> You'd be arrested in a video game. Of course, when you get arrested in Grand Theft Auto, they take away all your guns and they let you go. Oh. Which is probably, huh? <laughs> maybe that's maybe these police officers are like, okay, how do we do this? Wait, I know. I played that game. I played that game once. This is how we do it. I'm pretty sure. Because it's all legit. Uh, oh, okay. I, Mike added this one from earlier about the turtle story, but it's too good not to use. It's turtles all the way down. If you don't understand that reference, it's it's a ring world. It just, it, oh. it's, it's, never mind. It's funny. Just trust me when I say it's funny. 
Okay. All right. Our last story is going to make you angry. I'm sorry, but it is Florida, so. But I can't reach my comfort kitty. She's sleeping. Have you ever been driving and realized that you weren't wearing your seatbelt just when a police officer took paid attention to you? I've had a broken seatbelt and gotten heckled by a police officer on the highway over his loudspeaker. I've I I've been driving and I realize I have my seatbelt on. I normally do, but but normally it's that time when I don't have my seatbelt on that the police officers suddenly think I'm really interesting. But you are interesting. What? You think I'd be a sidekick to a boring dude? Point. Just. I'm probably interesting in Mom the Chinese. Lebowski jokes can only carry a show so far. I'm interesting maybe in the Chinese sense of the word, but... Okay, so, yeah, and I have done the hasty scramble to put my seatbelt on, which didn't work once. I got a ticket for that one time, but... Even then, that was minor compared to this... Mom puts baby in trunk to avoid ticket I saw this. for no car seat. Miami, And Florida. it's worse when you hear what else is in the trunk. Yeah. It wasn't 51 turtles. Um, Florida woman was arrested after authorities found her baby in the trunk of her car during a traffic stop. Authorities in Broward County said they initially tried to stop Breonna Watkins because of a broken headlight. Instead of immediately pulling over, Watkins kept going for a quarter mile. Okay, I can understand that you put on what you you get you're out, you're given four miles to pull. Yeah, over. once you put on your um, blinkers, standards. yeah, that's you do that to get to a public place or a safe place to stop. You got four miles. After four miles, it's considered a chase, and you're in trouble. But deputy said Watkins, nineteen, didn't want to take it for not having the baby in a car seat, so she told a fourteen year old passenger. To hide the baby in the trunk before stopping. <sighs> Dippy said they didn't realize the child was in the trunk until after they placed Watkins into a squad car for driving no license. That's when a deputy said he heard crying coming from the trunk and found the child. The baby's reportedly lying on top of a large pair of bush cutting shears, a rusty metal hanger, a plastic CD case, and a large rusted tire iron. Authorities said there was a used gas can in the front of the car, a used fuel pump, plastic bags, and many other hazardous materials, which could have easily injured or killed the infant. Now, here's the thing. You were getting pulled over already. You were driving without a license. <clears throat> You're already fucked. Yes. You're already up Schitt's Creek without a paddle and a hole in the boat. <clears throat> no car seat, least of your problems. But the solution to your problem is, let's just... Because the, the way I heard the story, she had her kid pull down the back seat and slide the baby into the trunk. So let's just slide the baby into a almost comical <laughs> box of death. Yep. That'll make, that, there is no situation, none, in which put the baby in the trunk will improve your and outcome. And I don't know why you would think that baby would not cry. It's in a trunk! I'd cry and I'm a grown-ass man! I might curse a bit, but I'd also cry. I don't want to go in a trunk. So there's so many ways in which this was the worst plan possible. The, 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 the phrase, put the baby in the trunk, should Nobody. never... Nobody puts baby in the trunk. Mm. You went, yeah, of course you, yeah, you went there. You went there. <laughs> I'm not even sorry. I should be. I should be. Not. You should ne put the baby in the trunk is never a phrase that should ever be used. Ever. No. Because what follows is not going to be a good thing. Nothing good is going to happen after that point. That is the stopping point for good I mean, things happening. Maybe in like a zombie apocalypse scenario, like if on season five of The Walking Dead, they have to keep Judith 
from a shambling horde of zombies. Okay, put the baby in the trunk. Make sure you have keys so that when you're done fighting off the shambling horde of zombies, you can get the baby out of the trunk. I'm going to go I'm out on pretty a sure there wasn't a shambling horde of zombies on, on the way to them. Although they were armed the fuck up for it. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I don't have think we're ever going to have to worry about that scenario in the real world. Oh, you don't belong on the internet. <laughs> oh. Are you familiar with the internet? Do you I... know where you work? Because <sighs> these people are arming the fuck up. You don't even know. And this isn't even going to be one of those cute stories you get told by your grandma when you get older. You know, oh, when you were little, your mom put you in a trunk. Remember that time you got put in the trunk with the rusty gardening shears? Although, I did once get locked in a rusty rabbit hutch by my sister. When well, I was that's three. different. Siblings are awful. She, she wanted to play with her pet rabbit, and my, sister, my mom told her to watch me. So she took the rabbit out and put me in. It made a certain kind of sense. <laughs> when she got bored of playing with the rabbit, she put the rabbit in, left me there. And, <laughs> and my mom's like, where's your sister? And she's like, who? And she's like, your sister, your toddler sister. <laughs> and she's outside by herself. No, she's fine. She's fine. <laughs> well, technically you weren't going anywhere. Locked in the fucking rabbit hutch. <laughs> She also locked me under my crib with the collie. I live with her now. And she's the one with kids. They both have kids. The worst thing she does to me these days is make me eat vegetables. So far. She may have plans. She almost assuredly does. So, yeah, the first thing we learned this week is... Nothing good happens once the baby goes in the trunk. No. It's like proper little old ladies say nothing good happens after 11 p.m., which is a lie. Case in point. It's 1220 right now. Yeah. <coughs> nothing good happens with the baby in the trunk. No. We learned that once, twice, three times a DUI. Um, what did he get for? Yeah, do you get like a whole punch after that? Do you get like, like a free refill? Is the fifth one free? Yeah, we we apparently learned that, you know, if at first you don't succeed, try try again. Yeah. Really try try again. We've learned that Maybe he's secretly in love with the check-in officer. You're seeing a little raising Arizona going on. Yeah, here. with the booking officer. Yeah. We, we've we learned that most interpersonal problems are only made worse with the addition of a chainsaw. Yeah. I'm not going to go say in all, but I'm going to say pretty much most situations with a running chainsaw, not going to make things better. Not going to calm tension. We've learned that when attempting to smuggle things... A knowledge of basic anatomy will help your chances of going undetected. We have so many people smuggling stuff in their pants. At least this time it wasn't a meat product. Well, it was going to be. I guess technically, be. yeah, it was. It was going to be. That was the intent, eventually. At least it wasn't at Walmart. <laughs> We've learned that the quickest way to stop someone from masturbating is to take them to Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> That's one to grow on, kids. And finally, we've learned stop looking at your iPhone and pay attention to your goddamn surrounding once in a while. Participate in your environment. Otherwise, you might get your ass arrested. Pay attention at the store. Your retail workers, thank you. <laughs>